Hi everyone, I'm Yvonne King. I'm the Film Programs Manager at the Nerve Centre. You are about to watch a recording of a BFI Film Academy lab session on funding your short film through BFI Network. BFI Film Academy labs are all about helping 16 to 25 year olds break into the screen industries. These monthly practical sessions are led by industry professionals with a focus on explaining the specifics of working in film and television and developing your skills to become the best creatives that you can be. The labs are programmed across three strands, storytelling, business of film and career ladder. We hope you enjoy today's session. Joining us today is my wonderful panel, which I'm, who I'm delighted to um, welcome and introduce today. We have Sean Harrison, who is the Programme and Funding Manager for BFI Network right across the UK. We have Jude Lister, who is the BFI Network Wales Manager joining us from Film Simru today. Wilma Smith is the BFI Network Talent, of the, Talent Development Executive, a short circuit in Scotland. And Christine Morrow is the new and emerging talent development executive at Northern Ireland Screen. Now, to kick off, I'm going to hand over to Sean Harrison, BFI Network Programme and Funding Manager, who's going to give an overview of BFI Network and how it works across the UK. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Haven. Um, so the first thing I've got to show everybody, um, Peter has got a, a sizzle reel from our films from 2020 through 2022. So we'll watch that first and then I'm going to share some slides and talk about network, specifically network in England. Running, running to stay on track. Wake up, people of the earth. Wake up, leaders of the world. The storm is coming. And what was impossible one moment suddenly becomes possible, even inevitable. I would never give up. There's always a way. So that was our sizzle reel there. That was from the films made in 2020 through to 2022. Um, this slide here is from a film also made in 2022. This was a bit of a long list. This is a gun gun, and this was from another film I'll talk about in a bit. But um, to start off with, I thought I'd maybe just I'll share how network is set up first, which is a... Um, it's done geographically. So my colleagues on the call today um, are from the delegate nations. So that's Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. Um, we've also got a partner in documentary film, which is Doc Society. And then the part that I'm going to talk about is around our English hubs. So there are five English hubs. Um, they are in North, Midlands, Southeast, Southwest and London. Um, and within those hubs, there's two talent executives. Uh, so there's talent teams in each of the regions and all of the funding and all the support that we offer, or most of it, I should say, sorry, is through those regional hubs. Um, there's a little bit about network there. So we are for newer and emerging talent um, that is starting out in their career. So maybe they're not their first short, but maybe their first bit of funded work all the way through to early development funding, which is for filmmakers with a significant body of work that are make, looking to make the jump from shorts to features. Um, one, of the, one of the parts of the work we do, which is slightly different to Film Academy, is that all of the filmmakers we support are over the age of 18 and not in full-time education. Um, and each of the regions will all have a different approach to their talent development programme. So, we might have identified a need for uh, director support in the Southwest, where in the Southeast, it might be that they need to have more support for writers. Um, so it does really depend on where you are and which hub you connect with. And that would be the first point of call. And these are the hubs here. So as I mentioned, it is based on where you are. And if you're into documentary, then documentary is through Doc Society. So there'll be a link at the end, which will um, be able to put you in touch with the talent teams in those regions. And that's the first point of contact, I'd say. So if you're interested in the work that network's doing, 
um, in your local area, then please get in touch with your talent exec um, through the link at the end. The first way that we support talent, and the big one is funding. Um, so we fund short films in fiction, uh, live action, animation, or immersive projects. We also do documentary. And as I mentioned, we do some early feature development funding. This is all separate to the funding that's in uh, Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. Um, and my colleagues will get into that in a bit. But for now, I thought it would be good to go into a little bit more detail on the short film fund. So this, this fund um, is open once a year. We're just at the end of the current funding round and the next one's scheduled to open in January, 2024. Um, as I mentioned, there is production support for fiction short films in live action animation immersive in VR. Uh, it's UK wide with partners and, and local talent executives in the regions, as I mentioned. And then the bit about the, the eligibility would be your film has to be up to 15 minutes in length. And you can apply for up to £25,000, depending on the level of experience um, and if there's any additional needs around access. So if it is your first time applying for funding, it would make sense to come in at five minutes for a smaller amount, say five to ten grand, rather than a 15-minute £25,000 project. As part of the development of the cohort that get awarded funding, we'll offer some additional training and network for the creative team. And as I mentioned, all applicants have to be over 18, based in the UK and not in full-time education. So for the way that the short film fund works in England, for teams applying, it's based on where the director is living. So if the director is in the north, the writer's in the southwest, and the producer's in the Midlands, the application will be assessed by the team in the north. Um, similarly, for Scotland, Wales, and, and Doc Society, and Northern Ireland, they'll have their own eligibility. So if you apply into one of the funds within the deal to get partners, it's best to get into them is separate hours. Um, and then our other fund, which is for more experienced filmmakers, is just about to open. So this is for filmmakers with a strong body of work. So that would mean, say, industry recognition or some award wins um, who are heading towards feature or on the cusp of making that move to feature. And it's a, for a grant for writers to take an idea to treatment stage. Um, and then we'll support them with maybe equipment reductions with the BFI Filmmaking Fund as we try and strengthen the there. There's also equivalent, equivalent development funds in Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and society as well. And then occasionally we do some other funding. So we just shot uh, more films for freedom, which is for um, LGBTQIA plus stories that are in collaboration with filmmakers in the UK and the Middle East of Africa. Uh, each of the projects have to have an international component. So that could be through filming in those countries or from a filmmaker that has uh, cultural heritage from those regions. It's in partnership with the British Council, um, and it was in response to BFI Flair not receiving enough films of LGBTQA content from the Middle East or Africa. Um, and we are just about to go into assessments for the next round of that now. And one of the other funds we've just, um, in the middle of production, is the NHS Untold Film Stories, which is in partnership with the Arts Humanities Research Council and the BFI National Archive. And that's for three filmmakers to work with the archive to create three new films um, that will be put on, um, distributed and then put into the archive um, in the future. One of the other things we do, which isn't funding, um, is around professional and creative development. So most of the work that we do uh, is through the English hubs um, and through the delegate partners in the nations and Doc Society, but we do run a couple of programs centrally. Um, one of the ones that's just about to, to go uh, in October is BFI Network LLFF, which is in the middle of the BFI London Film Festival. And it's for up to 15 filmmakers that are really on the cusp of making a feature. And this is a, a festival, uh, sorry, this is a development lab at the festival, which helps them meet producers, meet financiers, um, meet filmmakers that are just maybe one step ahead of them. So they've just released their debut fest uh, film at the festival. And then there's also um, an opportunity for them to screen some work at the festival as well. So they get a bit of a, pop, a platform and spotlight on their work. The other program, which is now at, towards the end of its run is Insight, which is Emerging Producer Program. So this was for producers that were again making the move from short film to feature film, um, and that was run in partnership with Screen Yorkshire. Uh, we have had a one cohort in 2020 and then one in 2022. And then another program that's still running now is BFI Flair and a BAFTA mentoring, which is for LGBTQIA filmmakers that are mentored through um, BAFTA members, and they also have access to BFI Flair. Um, we had some development sessions with BAFTA there as well. 
And then the last one, which is on this slide, is, is just about a launch, which is um, a travel and travel grants through the British Council, which is the filmmakers, support filmmakers, take their film to international festivals and to attend international talent labs. So I've got a little bit more information on a couple of these. So Insight, which I said is finished, it was a nine month program. Uh, and this is for experienced producers that are, are needing a little bit of support in kind of bridging the gaps in their skills to make it to long form work. Um, it was led by Spring Yorkshire, including a trip to Bernal Isle. And those filmmakers now, um, a couple from the 2020 cohort, are now going into feature production on their, um, on their debut features. For producers on the earlier end of the scale, um, there is development opportunities for producers through the local hubs. So I used to work at Film Hub North. They run a producer lab with the Midlands. I think there's similar opportunities in the other regions. So again, it's best to get in touch with your hub and see what they've got going on. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, Flair as well. So this one is for filmmakers from an LGBTQIA plus um, who are looking to, who have found it more difficult to network in the regions, uh, sorry, to network in the industry and, and maybe from the regions and don't have those learning connections. So they're brought down to the London LGBTQ Film Festival, which is BFI Flair. Uh, they partnered with BAFTA members to get some development work. And that's an ongoing program that runs about 10 months of the year. Um, so the next one should be around March next year. And then this is the next one. This is the one that's just about to go. So this is a really exciting one. So this is for 15 filmmakers. Um, it's fully UK representative. So there's filmmakers from Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and all of the English regions. Um, and it is over four days in London at the Film Festival where we'll bring in guest speakers. They'll have full delicate passes. We'll indulge it. We'll go to the um, industry programme. We'll also have some of the receptions that we go to. We'll have our own closing event. So the big celebration of everything Network does and the filmmakers that are at the far end of the scale. And I would say that is probably the furthest that we will support talent is getting them to that, that moment where they're just about ready to feed funding. And then we would with our colleagues in the Filmmaker Fund and that would hopefully be their next progression. That's a very quick tour of what we've got going on in Network. And I'm sorry if I've, I've run over even, but I'll, um, I'll hand back to you guys now. John, that was great. Thank you so much um, for that as well. And great to see just the pure range of opportunities that you um, that you offer as well. The travel to other festivals and, um, you know, the, the access to festival and networking opportunities are so invaluable as well to filmmakers. So um, brilliant to see. And I think also about uh, Charlotte Regan, who has just directed Scrapper, which is out doing absolutely phenomenally well in the festival circuit as well. And Charlotte, I know, is an alumni of our festival here in Foil Film Festival in Derry, also an alumni of all the network opportunities. I think she went through every stage of network with yourself, Sean, did she? Yeah, that's right. So, so Charlotte had a film, No Ball Games, which is funded through um, BFI Doc Society's Made of Truth. Uh, fund. So yeah, she's a real success story, especially coming from Film Academy through to Network and then finally through the Filmmaking Fund that is shows you that progression that is possible. Oh, it's so possible as well. We might get into that again later on in the session for sure. Guys, yeah. keep your question. Big ups to Charlotte Regan is absolutely right. And keep your questions coming in as well, particularly for Sean. He's going to stay till the end of the session to have a chat. Now, Film Simru provides funding and training to emerging and established Welsh filmmakers, offering exciting cinematic experiences to audiences across Wales. They develop new skills and career paths for new and emerging talent through a range of training programmes. I'm so excited to hear about it as well. So let's meet up now and welcome Jude Lister, who is the BFI Network Manager for Wales, to tell us more about BFI Network activity there. Thanks for having me. I think we're going to see the promo reel first from our Beacons Short Film Fund. Enjoy. We must be brave. This is a chance to start over. To take a chance on something good. Come on! <laughs> take off to Ben! I'm just really happy for you. Don't be no grown or do you less harm than those of us. We take a I love it here. 
our little piece of Wales. Thanks very much. So just to introduce who we are. So we are the delegate partner for BFI Network Wales. So we deliver all BFI Network activities in Wales, um, but we're also the development agency for Welsh film. Um, so more broadly, we work across film funding and filmmaker funding, but also we have work across skills, uh, training programmes, and also we fund uh, independent cinemas and festivals across Wales. So our activity is, is also broader in terms of the sector in Wales. But what I'm going to talk about today is obviously about network. OK, so in terms of BFI Network Wales, so um, we offer short film funding, which I will talk about in more detail. Um, but we also have uh, career development funding opportunities and uh, other programmes. So, for example, we have a Welsh delegation at DocFest every year for documentary filmmakers. And that's just one of the annual opportunities that we run. And we also run regular talks, roundtables, showcases and networking, whether those be online or in person across Wales. And we often partner with different festivals in Wales and different venues to deliver activity as well. Um, it's worth mentioning, it's not on this slide, but we also do fund uh, feature development and also feature production. But I'm going to focus this very much on the short film fund. So our fund is for short films is called Beacons. Uh, it's run annually um, in partnership with BBC Wales. So we have a broadcast partner, which means all of the films um, not only go to festivals, but they get a BBC Wales broadcast and they also go on iPlayer. Um, it's run with a development phase um, before we take projects into production. Um, so we have a first round of development awards. This year we're taking on eight projects for development. And then we'll be taking a smaller number of those into production. Um, and around that development phase, we were in a series of mentoring and training opportunities because we look at it very much in terms of um, developing the talent behind the films. In terms of who can apply, um, so the director must be either born in Wales or based in Wales or both. Um, the other team members can be from other parts of the UK. Um, as I think Sean mentioned previously, all of the network opportunities are from uh, aged 18 and above and for those who are not in full time education. Um, teams should have a creative track record um, that might be in screen work, but it could also be in other narrative mediums such as theatre or you might get a writer coming from novel writing or you might get, you know, talent coming from other disciplines we've had people come from kind of dance and and various other areas so um we do kind of look at that range of of interesting background experience but ideally that would have some narrative element um you do not need to have a producer attached at the point of application um for projects that we take on that don't have a producer uh, film cymru can help facilitate producer conversations um, and help you connect with, with the right producer for your film. And you'll see that we've got um, stills here from, from some of the films that we funded. Um, so in terms of what we fund, um, so we can fund live action, animation, documentary, or a hybrid of, of any of those things, um, up to a length of approximately 15 minutes. The project should be at development stage because, as mentioned before, um, we have that development phase where we work with the teams on their projects. Um, so each project has an exec from Film Cymru and an exec from BBC Wales who will give editorial feedback and also kind of strategic support um, during that development stage. Uh, in terms of the budget, it can be anywhere between uh, 5,000 and up to 25,000 pounds budget. Or if, you know, a team is confident that they can secure some additional co-financing, we can consider that as well. Um, the only limitation with that is that we have obviously a broadcast partner already on board. So that brings certain, you know, there's a license agreement basically with, with BBC Wales. So you'd need to consider that if you were looking at co-financing options. In terms of how to apply, so uh, we have an application for form which allows for written answers but also if you prefer you can um, send us a video or a voice note 
um, and then you need to send some additional materials along with that application form. So that would be um, CVs or short biographies from your core team. So your writer, director and producer, if they're attached. Um, and then some sample work from the director. So if there wasn't any screen work from the director, that would be things like links to, for example, previous theatre work or anything that you have. Um, alongside that, we would ask for the script or the treatment if it's documentary or potentially a storyboard if it's an animation and that's the way you prefer to outline your story. And then any additional visuals to go alongside that from the director. So things like mood boards, uh, reels, things like that. Uh, and then the production budget. Um, now, if you don't have a producer attached at point of application, we always do, sorry, excuse me, we always do consider that. So we kind of ask for a rough budget at application stage, which can then be reviewed further down the line. Um, I was asked about top tips when we were prepping for this session. So I had a little think and, you know, some of these might sound obvious, but um, they, these are things that, that come up quite a lot in terms of what we're advising applicants. So um, the first really obvious one is watching other short films, um, which is a really great way to get a sense for the kind of storytelling that really works in the short format. Um, quite often we get applications and there's a really strong idea there, but it's perhaps pitched more towards, um, say, being a TV pilot or... Um, you know, the story feels like it needs to be a longer than 15 minute film. So I think getting a sense of what other filmmakers are doing in that short format and how they're experimenting with it is really, uh, really interesting when you're developing applications. Um, it also allows you to see where, you know, maybe there have already been lots of short films made about the topic that, that you want to make a film about. Um, and then maybe you can think about what makes your film uh, different to that. Um, think about your career development. So, you know, if you already have a, a body of screen work, how is this new proposed short film going to move you on in your career and help you get where you want to be? What's what's the evolution in your craft? Um, whereas, you know, if, if you haven't done any screen work and you're perhaps coming from a different um, creative medium, you want, might want to think about, you know, something that's, I don't know, you might want to make a micro short or something that's very contained, that's slightly lower budget so that you can kind of dip your toes into, into that filmmaking experience. Um, I think everyone applying to a short film fund, you know, should be asking themselves, why does it need to be a film? Why does it need to be on the big screen? Uh, why is this filmic storytelling rather than a piece of theatre or TV or something else? Uh, it's a really, really key one for me when I'm looking at applications as well. And then lastly, I've already used this word distinctive, but um, it's it's really, really crucial because we, you know, as as BFI network across the UK, we get hundreds of applications. So um, just thinking about what's going to help your idea stand out, whether that's a point of view, a setting, a theme that you haven't seen before on screen, a character you haven't seen before on screen. Um, yeah, think about what, what makes it distinctive. Yeah, we've had we've been running beacons for quite quite some time now. Um, so we do have some alumni who have progressed to feature films. Um, so Jay Badwani, who's a documentary filmmaker, um, released his debut feature Donna last year, which was Biffa and BAFTA nominated. So that did really well. Um, Catherine Lindstrom um, released her debut feature, very low budget debut feature, Nuclear in 2020. You can catch that on your uh, streaming services. Um, and Ryan Andrew Hooper. Um, had his debut feature, The Toll, also released in 2020, uh, which was actually based on a similar story to his short film. So that acted as a bit of a proof of concept to help him get to the feature. So, yeah, just to talk about a few of our alumni. But it, it's really important to say that, you know, there's all kinds of other progression um career progression points that people have, you know, been able to achieve, like getting an agent or, you know, even progressing to higher budget shorts or being selected for some of the other network pro programs. Um, so, yeah, it's not all about going straight to features, but OK, so if you want to find out more um, and I'll put all of these links in the chat for everybody.
Um, but you can go to filmcumry.com, which is our website for information and resources. We have a short filmmaker, short filmmaker resource page that you can check out. Um, you can follow us on socials for updates on all of our opportunities. And a, quite a few of our Beacon Shorts are now available on BBC iPlayer, so you can give those a watch. Wonderful, Jude. Thank you so much for that as well. And I think it's a really interesting point that you raise about the additional supports that the likes of Network offers to filmmakers as well. I thought it was very interesting that you talk about um, that you don't necessarily have to have a producer for a first time film project. And I'll ask you a bit more about that later on. Um, where do the producers come from? Um, the, so the producers that you would match to a particular film project, would they be alumni? of previous schemes or is there a cohort there that you work with locally or they don't have to be um we tend to just start a bespoke conversation with each filmmaking team because ultimately it has to be the right fit for the team and for the project um so we may recommend for example welsh producers in our networks but um we can also talk about their ideas and then and then kind of build build up a list and go from there because it has it has to be the right fit it's super important Absolutely. And that's a really kind of a tailored approach as well to each and every um, application too. So good care to um, to take people for applying. Thank you, Jude. Up north now to Scotland, to meet Wilma Smith, who is the BFI Network Talent Development Executive with Short Circuit Scotland. And Wilma is going to present on the work of the Short Circuit programme and the many opportunities that are there for Scottish talent as well. She's a very experienced filmmaker herself for over 20 years. And so I'm looking forward to hearing from you, Wilma. Are you there now and ready to get stuck I in? Am. I thank you very much for inviting me along. Um, um, I think we are going to watch the, the showreel from Short, Short Circuit first, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. So uh, Short Circuit is a, a talent development scheme uh, based in, in Glasgow and we are part of Film City Futures, which is a non-profit organisation uh, in Govan. Um, so our mission is to connect people, talent, space and opportunity, enabling access and entry to the screen industries for all. And we offer screen training and development programmes that are creative and challenging and most importantly, meet the needs of our industry and engage uh, new and emerging talent. Um, so we believe that the most effective environment for creating learning and sharing knowledge and developing talent is within a living, breathing production hub. And as I said, we are based in Govan and uh, we are very much in the heart of the, the industry. So we're in a, a an old Victorian building, um, which used to be a town hall and we've been operating since 2004. However, Short Circuit has a... Um, um, came about in 2020, it uh, happened to be locked down 2020. Um, but uh, as I said, Film City um, is a 500 square metre building space and it has hosts numerous production office facilities uh, and over 35 individual sound and picture editing suites and home to 25 creative companies. So I'm going to talk about Short Circuit. Uh, I'm one of the talent executives and um, we offer um, two training programmes and two funding opportunities. 
So the the first one I'm going to talk about is Sharp Shorts, which is one of the funding opportun opportunities. We're, we're uh, funding up and coming writers and directors and producers to create an inspiring and engaging and boundary pushing short films, both in live action and animation. And the we fund um we fund up to six projects. Uh, up to the length of 15 minutes and it has got that kind of appeal in the audience uh, to reach uh, international film festivals. Um, so uh, we select, we shortlist 12 projects and we take them through three months development phase. Um, you can be a writer uh, applying um, as an individual, you can apply as a writer director or you can apply as a full team of a writer writer, director and producer. Um, like uh, Jude and Sean, it is um, for 18 years of all ages, 18 years and over, as long as you're not in full-time education. And although we are based in Glasgow, we uh, encourage, you know, we, we take applications from all over Scotland. Um, so it, we ask for um, outline ideas and mood boards and we also in application stage we ask for personal statements and pre links to previous work. Um, we have a pool of readers uh, who to date since April 2020 have assessed over a thousand uh, submissions for the scheme and over 44 uh, short film projects have received the development and uh, 25, which will soon be 31, short films will be, uh, have been commissioned. So over three months, writers, directors develop their short film proposals uh, into draft scripts and then they go to pitch in front of a panel and successful applicants, um, successful uh, filmmakers will then receive up, uh, up to £25,000 uh, of funding and they will receive uh, masterclasses, editorial feedback, peer-to-peer -peer workshops and bespoke training, depending if it's a uh, live action or animation. Uh, our call for short for sharp shorts is every April. So as I said, we're just coming to commissioning stage, but we We'll always open our call around about April time. The next one I want to talk about is First Features. Uh, again, this is a, another funding opportunity. Um, first Features supports projects from initial idea to the foolish, fully polished uh, draft. And we work alongside Screen Scotland, uh, the team, the scripted team at Screen Scotland on that. Um, so that the idea for um, First Features is um, you know, getting getting your foot in with uh, writing your first feature script. So again, you can apply as a screenwriter, as an individual, or you can apply as a team. Uh, I should also point out uh, producers can be from all across the UK. Um, there are two levels of awards. There's early development, so that's from treatment to first draft. And then the second one, uh, further development is second draft and beyond. And um, if it then goes past that, it then gets handed over to the, the, the scripted team at Screen Scotland. Uh, the other two training programmes that we have, the next one is um, Producers Accelerator. And this is aimed at producers at the start of their careers who are looking to take that next step into the industry, but need support and furthering their knowledge and their industry of the industry and expanding their skill set. So it's for kind of early entry uh, and a kind of Scottish focus for that. So that aims to inspire and big the promising new producers in Scotland. And this is a course which is led by a course. Um, leader who is an um, industry expert uh, in producing in Scotland and this takes place uh, across four days in the form of two, a two-day workshop. Um, so we select up to eight applicants to develop their producing skills, um, again master classes, one-to-one -one mentoring sessions and the idea behind a uh, producer's accelerator is to um, you know help um, new producers taking their next step into a commissioned 
a project, for example, sharp shorts. So the next one I want to talk about is convergence. Convergence, again, is another training opportunity and it supports screenwriting. Uh, and it's for uh, writers who are coming from dis different disciplines. So it could be, um, you know, like um, a or being an author, being a poet, maybe being a documentary uh, writer, radio uh, writer. And so it's about uh, transitioning into the screen uh, sector. And again, we support in the, you know, development uh, of an idea into a, a short form script. And again, that's through a course leader who uh, we, we have David Pope, who delivers that, and uh, with peer group discussions, masterclasses, and one-to-one -one, uh, sessions. So again, yeah, it's, it's, it's applicants must have a kind of proven track record in that writing discipline. So again, like theatre, literature, radio, documentary, or artist movement image, uh, and that takes place in January. Uh, so I should point out Convergence and Producer Accelerator. Producers, Producer Accelerator, the, the, the submissions will go live around about the end of September, early October, uh, and Convergence shortly afterwards. Um, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything else out, because I think that is my last slide, isn't it? Um, yeah, so again, I, my kind of top tips are that... Uh, you know, just try and be creative um, and think of lots of different ideas. Um, so I always often think if you kind of settle on the one idea, you know, it can be quite uh, limiting. So have lots of different ideas on the go, uh, how you're able to kind of recycle ideas uh, that you might have in your, your notepad. Um, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we offer, I should also point out, we also offer a one-to-one -one sessions every first and third Thursday of the month. So you can have a session with myself and or the other talent executive. Um, so it's an online session and you can book up an, an, an event right for that. Uh, and you can be, really encourage applicants to come and chat to us. And that's for all our programmes. So please... Uh, we also have a presence at the Glasgow Film Festival and the Glasgow Short Film Festival. So again, please, if you see myself about, come and approach me and happy to answer any questions. Wilma, thank you so much. And I know myself, the team at Glasgow um, Film Festival, they're just a super team and they really do go over and above to support young filmmakers as well. And I just think it's so exciting the you know, the, the kind of programmes that you're doing as well, particularly the convergence one around bringing people in from different disciplines, because oftentimes people think um, if they haven't any experience in the film industry, can they get started? Can they be a writer? Can they create work? And um, you absolutely can. I can see questions of a similar vein coming through the chat there as well. And we have so many questions. So I'm going to start stop talking and move straight on to um, Christine Morrow at Northern Ireland Spring. Hello. And uh, Christine has been um, a huge supporter of short film and talent development uh, right across Northern Ireland as well. Uh, she has a pretty good success story to tell you about 2023, which I'll leave her to talk about a little bit more. But for now, delighted to welcome Christine Morrow from Northern Ireland Screen and I'll hand over to you, Christine. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, um, it's great to see everybody here. Um, so many, which is brilliant. Um, but yes, what we're going to do first of all is just watch the trailer for an Irish goodbye, which is a success story that um, um just mentioned there. So we'll watch that, and then we'll run through some slides as well. Sorry about your mother. I told you, I'm staying here to look after the farm. I'm not getting stuck here for the rest of my life. Mother and you. How's Larkin dealing with it all? He'll be fine. Oh, I almost forgot. I think it's a list of things that she wanted to do. You know, before the illness took her. I'm not going anywhere until Mum's done every single wish. 
Right. We do Mum's list, and then we go down to Margaret's. Dale. Dale. How many's on there? One hundred. A hundred? Look, no, come here! You might have warned me before you gave it to him. So, yep, that's an example of um, one of the shorts that was made through our company um, funding. And we also do um, individual funding as well for filmmakers. And I suppose what I wanted to talk about tonight specifically was the short film call that we run. Um, at the minute, it's being run um, there annually, there's um a call open at the minute for individual and company awards. I can um just give you a quick overview here of the individual and company funding that's available. Individuals can apply for a funding award of up to well, no, six thousand. It's six thousand, it's not up to it's an award of six thousand. Um companies can apply for a funding award of either twelve thousand five hundred, seventeen. 1,500 or 22,500 um, and the companies you have to select the level of the award that you want to apply for and that's subject to meeting the eligibility criteria for each level because at each level each of the three levels has different criteria and we do ask that you meet each bit of the criteria um, in order to be eligible to apply and, and it's because the whole concept of the, the funding levels is that it's like a career ladder. You know, individuals progressively move towards working with companies. Um, but we're also um, aware that um, filmmaking is a collaborative um, medium, sport even, um, and you do have to work with other people. So, and even I've been reading the individual applications recently um, that we've um, had through from filmmakers and some of them have actually said, you know, I want to attach a producer. So similar to what um, Jude was saying earlier about um, attaching um, other filmmakers to teams, we do do that. And it's similar to how it operates with Jude. It, it is on a bespoke basis in that um you know it's a bit like blind date if you're um old enough to remember that um there will be matching with um filmmakers that takes place and it is very much um you're paired with um filmmakers who are working in a similar genre to yourself um and share your creative vision um just to say that this um all this criteria is available in the guidelines and it's on our website at the moment so you can take a look at it on the website and um, it's something to just kind of get your head around and then if you have any questions around it um, you can let me know um, but one thing to just point out is that the funding is for Northern Ireland resident filmmakers um, we, we don't um, we don't look at, at filmmakers from other regions um, and you do have to be over 18 and not in further higher education. Um, and you do have to have directed a minimum of one unfunded short film in the same genre that you're applying for funding. Um, and also send us in um, a previous sample of your work. So as I was saying, the level one awards of 12,500 level two 17,500 and level three is 22,500 and normally what will happen is the producer will be applying on behalf of the creative team as a whole and the the application will come through the production company and um, so the production company will um, have an established relationship with the director attached to the project. So this is level one. And as I was saying earlier, what we're really trying to encourage is that um, you do consider it as a sort of career progression and career ladder. Um, so you're starting off at level one and moving progressively up to three. But obviously there will be people who are, you know, higher up the ladder and higher up the sort of... Um, uh you know career level of career progression so they they can you know you can look for level two 
for level three. But what we're anticipating is that we wouldn't be funding very many um, awards at level three because that's the highest amount of money that um, you can apply for. Um, I suppose the, the biggest difference in the eligibility across each of the levels is the amount of films that you've directed previously um, and that they have been funded by um, international public bodies, broadcaster, distribution platform. And then level two is similar. Yeah, it's a minimum of three short films in the same genre. So it's just, as you can see, it's moving up. Um, so it is really to get filmmakers towards um, towards features ultimately, um, but in a very kind of holistic environment that you, by the time you would get to a first feature level, um, that you've gone through the process um, in a similar way to Charlotte um, with Scrapper in that by the time she had got to that point of um, first feature, she was 100% ready for it because, you know, personally, I don't think it's fair for filmmakers to go on the sets when they're not ready. Um, you know, you've got to be comfortable and you've got to be happy that you're given your best shot and best impression within the industry. We'll, we'll move on to the level three and you can just see, um, I suppose, the, the the biggest difference here is that we ask that the director um, has directed a short film that was selected in competition at an Oscar or BAFTA qualifying film festival. Now, th there are accredited lists of film festivals and it's really good to have a look at those um, from, you know, as early on in your career as, as you think appropriate, because it's, it's good to see where those festivals are located for a start because they're UK, Ireland, um, national, international, global. There's, you know, the spread across um, all every geographic um, place. And it's good to have an awareness um, of, of the festivals that you can apply to and um, also be aware of the ones that attract um, the the good films and, and the good filmmakers that you've aspired to, you know, looking at their work and thinking, you know, someday I'd like to be at that festival. So that's kind of the sort of the biggest difference in terms of eligibility um, of the three levels. What I'll do is just basically agree with all the top tips that Jude <laughs> and Wilma gave. Um, they were really good and I think the most obvious one and the one that people forget is watching films and the best place to watch films um, I'll probably give a plug to Foil Festival and every other festival it's festivals you know the more the more films you can watch the better and whether it's online or you know in person at festivals um, and even you learn as much from watching a bad short film as you do from watching a good one so you know, I would just encourage you to watch your films and also have a notebook with you to take notes. Um, if you see good films, write down what you liked about it and what worked. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a similar idea to one that you've seen, you know, all do the good. But Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, Christine. Thank you as well. And it's it's so true. You know, festivals are such an invaluable resource for filmmakers to go, to network together, to watch films, to talk about those films, to have fun talking about those films as well, you know. And an Irish goodbye is a good case in point. You know, we we hear a lot about the evolution of new content and new mediums for watching digital content as well. But an Irish goodbye was a short film that went the festival route. And it took it all the way to BAFTA and to Oscar. Charlotte Regan's an example of that as well. So for people, sometimes the query, is there a value with showing your film at a festival or attending films, um, watching films at festivals? There absolutely is, because it can open so many doors for you. Schemes like this that Christine, um, that Jude, that Wilma and Sean all work on. Success for you guys um, in terms of supporting filmmakers. What does it look like for you? as administrators of that. 
We well, should start that, with Christine's signature I there. Mic, I have your mic on. <laughs> yes. So, well, I actually think, and it's very generally a filmmaker fulfilling their potential. And that can mean anything from, you know, their film getting into a accredited festival to, you know, to go into network at LFF or getting on a scheme, getting on a producer scheme, you know, them, them just achieving what they want to achieve. And, and that might sound a bit naff, but it's, that's about individual, you know, achievement. And that's as important, you know, as, as the collective creative team. You know, um, especially I think for producers, you know, when producers can achieve things, you know, um, I think, you know, and the directors and writers, obviously, but I think individuals, if they can achieve stuff, it's good. Yeah. And I mean, I was interested, even Sean, earlier when you were talking about the level of training and networking that you offer creative teams as part of network as well. Um, for people that come through your schemes as well, and for those that are alumni, do they come back to share their experiences, give back or support with mentoring newer talent coming through? Yeah, for sure. Um, so a lot of the, the work that's done in the regions, um, they all will put on some kind of form of networking event and all of the alumni will be invited to that. So there's just kind of general mixing up those events. But thinking about some of the programs that, that we run, so um, we, as I mentioned before, we do BFI Network at LFF. Um, as part of that, we'll do like an alumni lunch where we'll invite all of the filmmakers that we supported. Um, or we'll also, for some of the panel discussions there, there's two filmmakers that met on a previous cohort in 2018, uh, Luna Carmoon and Helen Simmons. They've gone on to then make Horde, which is um, a debut feature. So there is a lot of, of kind of sharing of information, but it does, as I mentioned at the start, it really depends on where you are and what that looks like. So using my examples, when I used to work at Film Hub North, we used to do a screening and then a networking event afterwards. So that would be a mix of um, network funded films, but also films from other filmmakers in the region to share their work as well. Yeah, it's so important to do that as well, you know. And again, Jude, in terms of um, BFI Network in Wales as well, what struck me was the level of support you offer producers, new and developing producers as well. That executive support, so an executive from BBC Wales and an executive from Film Camera as well, um, that's a great kind of resource of experience to tap into how long do um those producers work with your with your trainee producers and your clients on the on the short film programs how long from start to finish would you be working directly with filmmakers in terms of really i suppose mentoring and developing them you know so our development phase is three months but if you think about the whole life cycle of making the film and also getting the film out to festivals which is kind of the long tail of it right? There's a lot of work to be done at that point still. I would say it can span over a couple of years through from when they first apply through to making the actual film and then getting it out there. And then obviously we have a life for the films beyond the festival circuit. So we try and maximise those BBC broadcasts. We promote them. We point people towards the films when they go on iPlayer. And we've kept like a really nice batch of films on there now that we keep kind of sending people there to watch so so yeah I would say uh, it can, but you know it can also be a bit longer if it's for example a stop motion animation those tend to take take a bit more time as well so it does depend on the project sometimes but generally it's a, it's a few years. Brilliant. I mean, we have so many questions coming through the chat, so I'm going to get to the questions very quickly and short my own conversation. But I did want to ask all of you, I'm going to start with you, Wilma, as well. And I know, Wilma, you've many years um, film experience as well. So I think all of your collective experience will, will give us a good answer on this. Like every short film application is different and there's no prescription really for what what kind of ideas or themes you're looking for, but can you give us an idea as to what grabs your attention in a short film application to the network? You know, what stands out for um, for you, Wilma, um, and maybe each of you very briefly after that. Sure, and I, I missed out as well, uh, sharp shorts and uh, first features, we take uh, films of all genres. Um, so we work uh, quite close, we, we work in a, a team of a set with assessors, a, a pool of assessors, and also a select a team of selectors. Um, so 
again, we think about the genre, we think about the story and the character development. And I suppose for myself, it's that kind of unique perspective in how the story is um, being told. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the other thing is, the passion behind why you want to uh, tell that story and that's where the personal statement um is is quite important to the the application as well um the the other thing as well i wanted to kind of mention was is the idea of you know as talent development and so uh, you know i really encourage people who come on board our programs to you know, embrace the whole, uh, getting feedback, because it is important, you know, that everybody who applies and who is commissioned, for example, that their, their vision is realised, you know, their own visions and uh, how they want to tell a story is realised, but to embrace the, the feedback and support that you get in the, the development process. So that whole, I think the key thing is the, the collaborative approach is really important and mm -hmm. uh, important to think about when you're applying. And I think, I suppose, building on that as well, um, Jude, is it a sense of identifying your team, even if it's new talent, but being very clear about where you want to go with your story as well. And then from there, does that help you in terms of matching a producer to a project? Absolutely, yeah. So, it, you know, sometimes what I advise writers and directors to do is again you know what watch are the shorts and maybe find out who produced them and if they might have an affinity with what you want to do um ideally obviously you want to be working with people who are on the same page creatively and practically and and who you get on with because you know as I said it can take a few years from the very start of that process through to the you know the the kind of festival circuit and beyond so it's it's a long time that you'll be working with someone on it Absolutely. There's lots of lovely positive comments coming through the chat today from, from everybody attending the session. Guys, thank you so much for sharing that as well. Um, very useful session. Um, uh, we have a filmmaker from the Southeast region as well, Sean, hoping that the Creative Producer Director Programme can be initiative, initiated in the South region as well. Is there plans for that or is it already underway? Uh, so each of the regions are responsible for their own talent development activity plans. Um, so there is, you could get in touch with the Southeast team to see if they've got anything coming up. I know that they've done something similar in the past, but I don't know if they've got anything planned um, for the rest of 2023, 24. But I'll, I'll drop a link in the chat where you'll be able to connect with all of the hubs uh, and you can put your questions to them. Absolutely brilliant. Well, listen, thank you. I'm we're going to move on to the to the Q&A from the audience as well. Oh, my goodness me. So many questions. Um, where will I start? Um, we have um, questions here from people from Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales. Brilliant. Um, can the scheme in Scotland be for people born in Scotland but now living outside Scotland, Wilma? No, the, the, the schemes are for the, the, the main talent. You have to be based in Scotland uh, in order to apply. Yeah. OK, so that's good to know and good to consider when you're putting your application in as well. So um, Ewan has sent through a question as well, saying, does planning filming location affect where funding should be applied to? For example, if if there's a London based filmmaker wanting to film in Wales, I'm gathering where would be best for them to apply to Jude or Sean? Do you want to pick up on that? So if you reply into the to the, the UK to the to the England BFI Network England fund, the director of that project has to be based if they're based in London, then the project will be assessed by London. Um mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter where you shoot, and we get a lot of projects that shoot in other regions. So it is just the assessment is done based on where the director is. Very good. Okay, that's great to know. It'd uh, be the same for us. The only nuance is if they're London based, for example, but they were from Wales, they're born in Wales, they would still be eligible. Okay, great. Good to know as well. I know I'm flying th through these questions, but I want to get through as many as I can. Wilma, one for you now from Joanna. Do schemes like Sharp Shorts or Screen Scotland consider providing partial budget support for specific expenses such as art direction or food? Um, is there any information on breaking down your budget to be found on the website? I believe there's not on the website, but I, what I would uh, suggest, uh, uh, Joanne, what you do is uh, sign up to one of our one ones and we'll happily uh, chat chat to you. Um, we 
at application stage, we ask for, you know, what you, what you think it might, the how much a uh, sharp shorts that you're wanting to apply for, with. And if you are shortlisted, we would then ask you to kind of give more of a, a breakdown. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say. Yeah, we also uh, cover accessibility uh, costs as well. So if you require additional support, you know, with childcare or uh, caring, um, BSL interpretations, just for example, um, we, we can provide additional funding for that. That's great. Thank you, Wilma, as well. Joseph has come through as well with a question for all the panel, I think. Can the speaker suggest alternative sources of funding for shorts that could complement BFI network funding should you need further finance for your short? And this person says aside from crowdfunding, which as we know, requires a lot of time and energy. So Sean, maybe do you want to pick up on that? Yeah, so so a lot of funds open and close throughout the year, and there's not many that are open year round. So the best thing I would suggest is signing up to the network newsletter. Um, I put a link in the chat before. So we send that out every month, and if there is any funds that are open around the time of applying, then we'll we'll include them in there. But it is, I mean, we haven't got any control when they open, so they might not fit in when um when our funds are open. You can match fund on, on BFI Network England short film funds. Um, and as part of the application process, we would ask teams if they have raised any additional finance or if they're planning on raising any additional finance, and then you get a bit of time to do that. But yeah, there's nothing specific I could share now, um, but I would say just get on the mailing list because we'll put out as many other opportunities as we can every month. And do you do a call out for one-to-ones in terms of the, the English hubs as well, or is that down to individual hubs, Sean? Yeah, it is down to individual hubs. So um, I know that Southwest do one-to-ones. I think London do one-to-ones. In the North, they run a monthly roundtable, which is for around 15 filmmakers at a time to join. Uh, so it's kind of like a networking session. But yeah, again, it's best to, to chat each of the hubs to see what they've got going on. That's great. Thank you. Um, one for Northern Ireland now, Ross, um, who we know, one of our alumni. Hi, Ross. Um, what would you recommend if you've been unsuccessful in funding? It happens to all of us, and I'm sure many members of our panel have put in funding applications for their own work, and some are successful, some are not. It's not the easiest, but what would you recommend to this young filmmaker to keep the dream of making their film alive? Keep the dream alive. Don't, don't give up. The worst, the, the worst thing you can do, uh, you know, and I think that's, uh, I know Wilma was saying earlier about having as many ideas as you can have on the go at any one time in your back pocket and working on them as and when you can. Um, and uh, rejection is awful. It's, it's difficult and it's horrible. And it's unfortunately something that, you know, in the industry, it's, it's nearly unavoidable at some stage um you'll come across it whether it's you know for your short or you know for your feature so it, it is something that you have to kind of get your head around and deal with um but and I think probably the longer you've been in the industry maybe the easier it is to deal with um mm. and also as well um I suppose surrounding yourself with like-minded and dare I say, positive people, <laughs> you know, um, and being around people who share your vision for your work and and want to see it on the screen, um, and that's um, and that will help, you know, um, because it's just about being able to keep going, you know, in the face of. I suppose there's psychology comes into it, you know. There's all the things that you would be doing, you know, to keep yourself above water generally you know that you can apply to filmmaking you know um but just keep working and and don't give up and also take time away from it as well because the thing with it it can be all consuming you know you can be running the film festivals and going here there and everywhere and networking and it can nearly become an obsessive thing so it's just as important to take time away from it and you never know, you might get inspiration from, you know, doing something outside of it, you know, whether that's working in theatre or, you know, um, photography, you know, taking photos, I think, is really good for inspiration. Um, oh, yeah, indeed it yeah, is. So, yeah. so anything like that. 
Brilliant. And so many people on this chat, like the Northerners are coming out in strength this evening, hooking up networking opportunities and things as well. Sean will have had experience of the energy of the Northern filmmakers there as well. Um, there's a question for a panelist here. It's just popped up in the chat and I have two more to get through on the Q&A. Um, myself, my team are already passionate filmmakers. We love telling stories that entertain. We tend not to attach any strong social messages to our films and focus purely on the entertainment factor. Might this put us at a disadvantage when it comes to applying to funding grants if we don't tell stories that have a social message attached to it? Does anyone want to take that one? Uh, yeah, I can mention a little bit about the BFI diversity standards. Um, so we ask every every applicant to respond to the BFI diversity standards, which would talk about representation in front of, but also behind the camera. Um, they're very detailed, and it is something that I would recommend all filmmakers start looking at and start taking into consideration with their work. Um, I'll drop a link in the chat for that. But yes, I mean, if, if you feel that you could put in a statement that supported those diversity standards, and your project wasn't that way inclined in terms of story, then there's a chance, but it's a lot of, there's a lot of information there and a lot of different things that we are looking for. So I would say consider that first um, before applying, but there are, there are ways that we can support, there's like some, maybe some development writing and how you might be able to introduce some other themes into your work too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that you need to start thinking about in terms of of diversity in front of and behind the camera in your project. So I'll, I'll drop that in the, the link uh, in the chat now. That's brilliant, Sean. Two very brief questions. Is funding available for someone based in, a producer based in the Isle of Man? Uh, I saw this before. I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to look into it. Um, yeah, I'll I'll drop my email in the chat again. If you want to get in touch, I'll look into it on our end, but I don't know um, for sure. And is there an upper age limit on funding? Don't know about the age limit on, on any of the funds. So 18 to 98, 108, whatever you want. Um, we have a question here. When is the right time to get a producer on board? And there's a couple of questions of a similar vein. So there's people asking questions here this evening that they don't have any network contacts. They are writers, but they don't know how to get started with filmmaking. So can you talk to me a little bit about how you might bring your your production team together for people that are totally new to that. Any suggestions or tips there? Jude um, or Wilma or Christine, if you want to jump in, I know I was firing all the questions at Sean there. Yeah, sure, I, I think from me, um, you know, engaging with your um, network activity, either in your region or your nation is a great first starting point. Um, see if they're running networking sessions, see if they're running round tables. We also talked about film festivals. If there are any film festivals happening near you, try to engage with them, see what the opportunities are, try to connect with people locally, find, try to find your people. It might not be, you know, that you find exactly the right people straight away, but keep going and you will find your people that you connect with. Um, yeah, sorry, Wilma, did you want to jump in there as well? Uh, ditto everything you just said there, Jude. Um, in Scotland as well, we the because in Scotland it's almost like a kind of pipeline the the training and the funding. So, uh, there's a networking opportunity once a month in Glasgow at GMAC Film called Film Loop. So you know, again, it's really important to just try and uh, meet pe as many different people. And I suppose as well, um, always kind of I'm a great believer in trusting in your gut instinct. So, like you know if you're a writer like a new writer or a new writer director and you've yet to meet a producer you know trust your gut because it's a little bit like forming a, a relationship you know in that sense so um you know just take your time and don't get too hung up if you don't if you know if you're applying for things and you are just applying as an individual you don't always have to apply with a producer and again uh, like uh, everyone else on the panel here uh, you know uh, we, we try to kind of um, uh, you know introduce you to different uh, producers and, 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 and team members so yeah 
Thank you. That's great. I'm just get, I'm just responding to something on chat here as well. I'm getting a little bit of a kicking about mentioning the Northerners. I can say the only reason I mentioned the Northerners was there was a load of Northerner filmmakers that messaged at the same time. I can absolutely see that the Southerners are out in force as well. It absolutely doesn't matter where we're from at all. And it's great that there's so many of you connecting here on the webinar chat and that we can connect with each other as well. So thank you for reminding me of that, Teresa. And you also have a question as well. Is there post-production funding um, available for filmmakers from ethnically diverse backgrounds? Uh, so not, none of the network funds are available for post-production. They would have to be from the start. There is something I think off the top of my head, which might be available for black and global majority filmmakers. Um, that is like a, a completion fund. So give us two seconds. I'll have a quick look for that offline and I'll just drop it in the, in the chat again there. That's great. Thanks, Sean. Um, Wilma, does Scotland's short circuit support documentary shorts or features? Uh, no, it's uh, for fictional projects. Um, if you are uh, interested in doing documentary, then in Edinburgh there is the Scottish Documentary Institute that offers a similar training and funding opportunities through Bridging the Gap. It's an excellent so, initiative, Bridging the Gap as well. We were fortunate enough to screen um, films from all the regions, Bridging the Gap last year, thanks to Christine. So um, absolutely fabulous work coming out of there too, as and well. And it's tomorrow, if you're thinking of applying. Okay, so get applying, yeah. documentary yeah. people. Yeah. Um, I could go on all evening with questions. I have one left to ask, and I'm so sorry we didn't get around to everything. I mean, is it fair to say, guys, that um people can contact after after the webinar to um or if there's any questions that we might be able to pass them on as well and try and get them answered or at least signpost you to the right people to be asking that question from? Thank you all so much. My God, you were so active on the questions. The last one I have is what are the biggest mistakes applicants make in terms of the short film fund? So what do you not like to see on an application? I'll ask all of you that. Christine, you're on my screen, so you're going first. <laughs> um, it's a, it's, that's a hard question, uh, but I think actually it's that you've, You've submitted the script because we ask for final, you know, final fully developed script. Well, not fully developed, but, you know, fully finished scripts that you've looked it over for spelling mistakes. It's the it's the draft that you're happiest with. It's a draft that you also feel you'd be quite happy if somebody said, right, you have to go and shoot that in a month or two months, that actually it's logistically possible. And... Um, you know, just practically that you've run over those questions in your head before you submit it, I think. Absolutely. And use your local contacts to speak to a good producer about logistics around location, filming, time management, budgeting as well. Lots of good resources online there. Any of the rest of the panel, anything to say on that? What not to do in an application? Yeah, just kind of like thinking about like um, the the... the being realistic within your budget and time scales and, and things like that. Um, you know, like getting a a I often see as getting a sci-fi a script where it's requires huge, huge mega bucks to make, you know. So uh thinking thinking about those sorts of things as well. Jude? Yeah, I definitely agree with everything that's already been said. I'd say also creatively, we have a lot of applicants who have a really great idea, but they're trying to do too much in, in one short film, um, either in terms of the story or in terms of the um, kind of aesthetic that they want to achieve with it. And um, I would say it's best to go with, you know, simple story, complex characters, for example, rather than trying to make something too plotty or make too much happen in that small time frame. Absolutely. And Sean? Uh, yeah, I think one of the things that, that's come up any time I've looked at applications is that a lot of people feel like the, the answer is like what we want to hear rather than getting themselves across. And I think it's important to remember that there's just another person at the end of the application process. So, you know, you don't have to, it's not about fitting into a structure or a box. It is getting yourself over within that application form. So, yeah, just kind of be true to yourself and, you know, don't worry about, format and in word and, and how you put things together in that application form it's like what you're really trying to sell is yourself the person is a talent that would want to develop and then the story is 
be part of that. But uh, yeah, don't worry too much about what you think we want to hear. Just tell, tell us what you want to say. Thank you so much for watching this BFI Film Academy Lab session on funding your short film through BFI Network. We run monthly live digital labs and would love to see you at our next event on Monday, the 20th of November. It'll be all about developing stories for different formats, including games, XOR and TikTok, and it will be delivered by Watershed. To find out more about this session, visit our lab's webpage, which you can find in this video's YouTube description and follow Film Academy on our social channels. Thank you and see you next time.